Mike is seeing none immediately. I'll ask one here from the podium. Uh, last year, you and Quinn Blanding becoming the only teammates in all 10 FBS conferences to finish the regular season ranked number one and two in tackles. What was it about that combination last year? What is it that allows you to build upon that to be maybe just as good, if not better, this year? Uh, yeah, um, me and Quinn are just always locked in together. Uh, we kind of play on a string. I like to look behind me and see Quinn. He likes to look in front of him and see me. So, you know, we really play off each other. And then we're just very competitive with each other. So uh, we're both leaders on the defense. So he like, oh, Quinn, you're going to get 10 tackles today. I'm going to get 11. So stuff like that. We just play off each other. And, uh, you know, ideally, I don't think you would want, you know, two players to just have all those tackles. We want to, you know, everyone else to, uh, I guess, get involved and uh, be a little bit more efficient on defense. So uh, hopefully we'll just improve on that. And uh, me and him will just get better and better. And uh, we'll have a great defense this year. Uh, to our left, I'm sorry about the fourth row there. Hey, Micah, it's Brad Franklin, CatsCorner.com. Just curious, you guys seem to have a lot of experience in the middle of your linebacking core, but on the outside, things are a little bit unsettled. What are you expecting? Who are you leaning on? What guys do you want to step up at outside linebacker this season? Um, uh, great question. Uh, yeah, me and Zach, we've, we've been together for a while. So, uh, But on the outside, I think you got a lot of young potential out there, a lot of great athletes. Um, Malcolm Cook, he's a great athlete. He's probably... Uh, we do this catapult testing, and uh, in practice, Malcolm Cook could run faster than any other player on the team. So I think you'll see a lot out of him. A lot of young guys, Chris Peace, um, Corey Jones, Matt Terrell, just a lot of young guys with a lot of um, untapped potential that will definitely prove it to you guys this year. To our right, first row. Micah, Dan Tortora, Wake Up Call, DT.com. Just what you can say about the energy that Bronco has brought, and your teammate just made the statement that relationships weren't as strong last year. Just what you can say about how you've seen the environment change. Um, definitely. Uh, no, uh, we've never been uh, challenged as much as we have with Coach Mendenhall, and that really brings you together. Um, you know, our tempo runs just to qualify for spring practice. You had a lot of guys that were just like, dying trying to make them and I remember coach uh, Soto during the uh, tempo runs he would come up to you guys and come up to us and just say you guys will never have an opportunity to die together like this again and it's just like when you think about it like that drastically it's, it's kind of crazy but it was tough and it was probably the most challenging thing a lot of us have ever done and just when you can accomplish stuff like that together it only brings you together and it only forms tighter bonds so yeah, just Coach Mendenhall challenging us on and off the field, you know, in the classroom, having to have 100% attendance in a classroom. That's, not, that's unheard of in college football these days. So, uh, you know, just stuff like that, it, it only brings us together, forms tighter bonds, and it'll help us this year. Micah, to your left, uh, along about the second row, further left. Doug Dowdy with the Roanoke Times. Could you talk about how much, how different this defense is from what you been accustomed to yeah um well just I guess the most different thing is that it's a 3-4 now instead of a 4-3 but I mean for me it's not that much different I'm still in the, you know, in the inside playing in the middle uh, we still attack a lot we're not going to just sit back and, and let teams you know dictate stuff to us uh, I will say that uh, coach Minahal he holds the defense accountable um, a, a lot more he doesn't expect you know, teams to run the ball the length of a blade of grass. So when, you know, when your coach is, is on you like that, you're going to play harder. He's going to make us, you know, try harder than we've ever tried, and uh, we're going to have a great defense this year. Anything else for Micah? Yes. Micah, your last one will come from the back of the room in the blue shirt at the camera. Micah, what, what makes you believe that you guys are going to exceed expectations this season? Can you repeat that question again? What, what makes you think you're going to be better than a lot of people think? Um, I mean, when I go out there to play, I know we're trying at our 100% our, our ability, 100% effort, and uh, just Coach Mendenhall, just he demands the most out of us, and he refuses to lose. So when your leader refuses to lose, you know, the, the, the players and the soldiers on the field will refuse to lose as well. So as I'm scanning the room, we'll go left side, Jackson, second row. Uh, yeah, Jackson, could you talk about how the summer has differed or been similar to past years? Absolutely. Uh, so this summer differs in uh, 
a lot of ways from the past summers that I've had at the University of Virginia. Uh, just starting off, everything's earned, not given. So uh, you hear a coach say earned, not given, and you wonder what that means. Uh, I'll tell you. Um, our workout gear is black and gray, no V savers. You got to earn them. Um, back in the spring, uh, we had to earn our way into the weight room and earn our, earn our way onto the field because playing football is a privilege. And um, uh, people don't realize that until you have everything stripped from you. And uh, uh, this summer has been another testament to that. You know, we have to earn our way onto the field every day. If our warm up isn't perfect, then you know, wh why would you be able to work out um, if you're not warming up to the best of your ability? Um, and then once we are finished with our work outside, then we will go inside. If our work outside is not perfect, then why would you go inside to work out? Um, why would you go inside the weight room um, if you haven't done everything you could outside? So that's how it's different. Thank you for the question. Jackson, back of the room, camera stand, red shirt. Mitch Carr, WRIC in Richmond. How would you describe the culture? Uh, you've done a, a pretty decent job of it already, but how would you describe the overall culture that Coach Mendenhall is trying to institute there with you guys? Yeah, so um, it's a great question, and I have three answers for that. Um, first is earn not given. Um, the second one is will before skill. Uh, you guys have probably heard coaches say, you know, I'll take a guy who tries hard over a guy who is better. Um, and then they'll go back on their word. No, that's, that's not what's happening at Virginia. If you try harder, um, you will be on the field. It's will before skill. Everything is earned and not given. And the third thing is uh, there's two, two ways to do something. It's the right way and it's again. Um, and, he, and they mean it. And those are just three you know, building blocks that are going to change the culture of University of Virginia and the football program ultimately. So. Jackson, to your right, first row. Jackson, Dan Tortora, wakeupcalldt.com. Looking at anchoring this offensive line, just what you can say about what the Cavs look like and what you, what you can say about the talent around you yeah. heading into this season under your new coach. Um, specifically offensive line or just talent in general? Okay. Uh, yeah, our offensive line, uh, you know, we return a few starters, um, and we, turns, we return some guys who have played and have, have experience. Eric Smith, I think, has started 32 games at right tackle and left tackle. Um, Michael Mooney has started 15, and, uh, you know, he was out last year with a little knee injury. He's back, and he's healthy. Um, got a few guys inside. Jack McDonald, um, that's a name you guys are going to hear. Um, myself at center, and, you know, we're kind of looking around for the right guard spot, but I think we have a good group of guys. And to go along with the past question, um, the way that our culture has changed with the team directly reflects how the offensive line has been building our relationships with each other because you have to play as, you know, one quarter. You can't play as five nickels. And uh, you have to be together in everything you do. So this summer has been a perfect testament to show how tight a group of guys can get and how well it's going to translate onto the field. Um, it's going to be pretty special. So a lot of experience. Um, athletic, big guys, and uh, it's going to be it's going to be pretty special. So, does that answer your question? Is it good? Okay, good. Jackson, I'll ask the question here from the podium. Your sophomore year, you break your foot. Your junior year, you come back in 413 passing opportunities. You don't allow a single sack. What does that say about you to be able to recover in such fine fashion? Um, man, so. You know, I'm not one for to you know, talk myself up or anything like that, but I think that uh, directly speaks to you know my work habits and uh, the habits of success that I've created for myself. Um, you know, it was a long road back from breaking my foot and uh, you know the the surgery and uh, the road to recovery. You know, it was extensive and it was hard, but um, you know, man, I I came to Virginia as a walk-on, and I think that correlates directly to earn not given. Um, I've had to earn everything that I've gotten at the University of Virginia. And after I broke my foot, I realized that even more. Um, I changed my life, um, eating, nutrition, working with directly with our nutritionist, Randy Bird. You know, I ended up losing, you know, 10 percent of my body fat over the last two years and adding 20 pounds of muscle, um, getting the proper rest I need, um, what, anything from you know, high yoga to work on my flexibility, um, to getting weekly massages to try to enhance my, uh, you know, 
my chances of being successful. Just trying to do anything I can to put myself in the right position to be successful. That's what I've been trying to do. Thank you. Left side, uh, lost the camera stand up, sir. Thank you. Yeah, obviously installing uh, or with a new coach comes a new system. Where do you think the offense was as you ended spring in terms of adapting to the new style, the air raid, things like that? And how do you see it heading into, heading into fall and how far, how much farther you guys have to go? Yeah, it's, it's much different uh, from what we've had in the past. Uh, just as far as the offensive scheme goes, you know, we're, we're running. We're on the ball. You know, our, our offensive goal is to be on the ball every 20 seconds. Um, and it's, it's, it's very different from what we've done in the past. You know, usually we line them up and kind of put two backs in the backfield and try to run it uh, down your throat. But now we're going to spread them out. You know, we, we have a little bit of two backs in the backfield. We can run. We can pass. But primarily, we're going to be on the ball quickly. It's, it's going to happen fast. And uh, we're, we're really going to be trying to run the ball down your throat. And then once you, uh, once you try to stop that, we'll, we're going to try to put it over your head. So it's, it's pretty good balance. And it's very different from what I've ever done. But I think we've as an offensive unit, we have transitioned pretty well, and we've, uh, we've embraced the challenge. So, Jackson, your last two questions will come from the back of the room. Camera stand, first guy, blue shirt. Jackson, Marty Hutloff from NBC29 in Charlottesville. What do you say to the, you know, the so-called experts, the media, that will likely predict you to finish towards the bottom of the ACC's Coastal Division? Um, man, I would say uh, that's why you play the game. No, no one knows anything. Uh, that's why you play the football. That's why you play the game. That's why you compete. That's why you try to put yourself in the position to be successful and win football games. Um, you know, all those ratings, those rankings, they're, they're nice. They look great on paper. Um, but at the end of the day, you got to put your helmet on and you got to go out and play the game. So that's what I would say to them. Jackson, last question for you. Camera stand, red shirt. Mitch, yes. Where is that? Camera stand, red okay. shirt. Great. Uh, Matt Johns said during spring practice that nobody has quit on the team or decided to run and transfer from some of the hard stuff that Coach Mendenhall has put in on you guys because you're unified and because in the past years, despite the record, you've been pretty close. Yeah. How much do you agree with that statement that, that maybe just a new approach is what's needed, but you have the ingredients to do, to do great things? Um, man, so just, just to start off, I think it's extremely important to be unified. And um, I mean, over the past few years, you know, you look back at those teams, and and I can speak I can speak for you know a lot of people. We just didn't have great relationships in that locker room, and that's completely different now. Uh, this is the tightest team I've ever been a part of, and it speaks directly to what we've been going through in the past few months with Coach Mendenhall and his staff. Um, it, it's special what's going on in Charlottesville right now, um, and you know, Coach Mendenhall says this all the time. Um, you know, if if you don't embrace the earn not given, will before skill. Um, well, then, you know, there is always a second option. And, you know, it may, if it's not for you, then that's okay. Um, because what we're doing is hard. Um, but doing hard things together will ultimately make you better at the end of the day. And that's what this team is all about. So does that answer your question? Great. Thank you.